Brian, David, congratulations. You've made it to the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home fortress where you will recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is a Knight's Templar Crusader sword. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Good luck, man. Good luck, Brendan. What I am really stoked about in building the Knight's Templar Crusader sword is the fact that it's a Knight's Templar Crusader sword. It connects with Christianity and the religious upbringing that I had. It's really going to be rewarding on a lot of levels. This is the steel I'm going to use to make my sword. The dimensions that I'm shooting for are 36 inches in length and at under three pounds. I could cut it and forge weld it. I could split it. I could draw it all out. But the plan is to uh, pull the sword out sort of like that. I have never unfolded metal this way before, and this is a big piece of steel. I think I can work with that. The main thing with this sword is to remove weight. So uh, we're going to work on weight reduction and get the fuller in there. Just a quick, dirty pull of ground in there, man. I have to start thinking about my heat treat, too. I'm going to have to hook a burner up to this forge. People up in Alaska, more so than many, we make a lot of our own tools and equipment. But really, don't do this at home. It's good to take your time, make sure that you have all the clearance that you need, and that you can get the piece into the tank. I don't want to rush anything. The main thing is getting a good heat treatment, the abuse that they're going to put this through. You could have a disaster going into the quench. I mean, it could come out all twisted. We'll just hope that that doesn't happen. So far, it looks good. And it's hard. So we got a successful heat treat. I'm happy. It's now a live blade. It just has to be finished up. You can almost see the light at the end of the tunnel. Some straightening to do. It's the beginning of day three. I've got the profile established. There's a little bit of beef here and there that needs to come off. Looking good. I'm feeling really good about my blade at this point. It's to contour. The fullers are cut. There's only one thing that I haven't done with my sword, and that's weigh it. Ew, we are over three pounds just with the blade. Anything more than three pounds places me at risk for elimination. By the time I add a pommel, 5.5. This wood that I'm using right here is Alaskan yellow cedar. Really nice wood for handles. I like it. It's really light. Now I'm going to make the pommel. You've got a long blade out there. You need something to counterbalance that. That's what I was looking for. Nice piece of wrought iron, over 100 years old. Just the right diameter for the pommel. That's going to add weight to the back and give it some balance. Yeah, I can't wait to see how it feels. Right now. Oh, yeah. They went very well. Look at the smile. <laughs> Having my celebratory ice cream, my ice cream cozy. Tomorrow, I just expect to put the final ride on the blade, and we'll be ready to do some testing. My blade is almost done. I drilled my pommel. I drilled around the edge of the pommel, ground a little bit on my cross guard. I've got my mast down to around three pounds, but I don't have a quench on my blade yet. That has to happen today. This is holy water from Chalice Well in Glastonbury, uh, UK. This is where Joseph of Arimathea allegedly hid the Holy Grail. Not much, enough to, uh, enough to bless the peace, though. I'm ready to go, and I'm scared out of my mind, man. This is a long blade, and if it goes down the toilet, I will be gutted. I think we have a blade. Booyah! The blade is essentially done at this point, so it's time to move on to the pretty parts, the gigaws, as I call them. Inlays from holy trees to the handle, red garnets into the face of the pommel. This will symbolize Christ's blood. There are, for real, religious artifacts included with this piece, not to mention my own love for it. I feel like I want to slash at something. This is a kill test, a Knight's Templar sword, an iconic weapon battle tested throughout history. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your sword and deliver killing blows on this ballistic dummy. 
Brian, you're up first. I would love to test your blade, but as you can see, I'm still recovering from an injury. So to be my arm today, please welcome RJ Martida, my brother. He will have the pleasure of wielding your weapons. Boom. Your sword is a little bit on the heavier side, but because of the pommel you have over here, it actually balances it out. There are areas that are sharp, and there are areas that are not as sharp. On the final blow, that edge has proven to be very sharp and actually would disembowel this ballistic dummy. Your sword, sir, will kill. All right, David, it's your turn. You ready? Let's do it. That is one of the sharpest swords I've ever come across. It's wicked scary. The cuts are lacerating almost in half. Without a doubt, your weapon will kill. Awesome. Ben? Gentlemen, to test the strength and durability of your edges, I'm going to attack these fully armored knights. But this test is all about what the armor does to your sword, not what your sword does to the armor. Brian, you're up first. Are you ready? Absolutely. Brian, your edge held up really well. It's a very obtuse grind that lends itself to this kind of test. The handle was comfortable. It's a nice shape. I was able to index very well. It stayed straight in the tests and didn't pick up any damage. Well done. Thank you. David, you're up next. Well, Dave, you have a much finer edge on this sword, and it's picked up a little bit of rolling. There's some edge deflection right here. You can hear it. But all in all, very good sword. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, next up, the swinging sandbag slice. I will cut this rope with one edge of your blade, releasing that sandbag, and then cutting that with the other edge of your blade. Let's see if they still have an edge. Brian, you're up. Are you ready? First off, there are sections of this blade that just don't have much of an edge. That first cut and just skated up the rope. Second cut, bit in, went right through. You can see how there's a lot of tearing at the edge of that bag, as opposed to a clean slice through it. I would have loved to have seen a little bit more edge, especially on that front half. David, you ready? Absolutely. OK. Your sword's sharp, very sharp. Pass through the rope, no problem. Pass through the bag, no problem. As far as the design of your sword, would have loved to have seen a counterbalance on this. Uh, this would be nice on a dagger. It's very small for this sword. Without that counterbalance, all that weight is so far forward. But it's a cutter. It's definitely sharp. Nicely done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, the judges have completed their deliberation, and they've made a final decision. You've both put in a lot of work here, but there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is... Dave, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Brian, unfortunately, your Crusader sword did not make the cut. Brian, I really applaud the fact that you brought a lot of yourself to that sword. In the end, it came down to your sword just wasn't as sharp as your competitors, and that's why we've got to let you go. Understood. Brian, please surrender your sword. David's sword cut better than mine. He outsmithed me. That's the way it goes, man. In the end, there can be only one. 
I may make another Knights Templar Crusader sword. I've still got 2,000 year old oak bits at home. I still have holy water at home. Anything can happen. David, congratulations. You are the Forge of Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for how much? 10 grand. That's right, $10,000. Good job. Victory feels good. In this competition, it showed me that I can push myself a little harder and uh, get more done. Looking forward to getting back home. First thing I'm going to do is fix my bike and go for a ride.